What's going on guys, Jacob here, and we have a brand new video on whether or not high rep squats and deadlifts is a useful way to train these big compound lifts for hypertrophy. And in this video, I'm not gonna be discussing this topic, but instead, the one, the only, Martin Rafalo, my colleague at JPS, and one of our head physique coaches, he's gonna be taking you through this topic and get used to it guys, because he's gonna be helping us out, presenting more informative, evidence-based content. So get excited, and without further ado, over to you Martin. Looking forward to it. Insert effect. Hey guys, Martin here, and today's video is all about why you probably shouldn't be doing high rep sets on squats and deadlifts. Now this video has been inspired by recent conversations I've had with Many people who have mentioned to me that they currently do high rep sets on squats and deadlifts and when I say high reps I'm referring to 15 and beyond and upon asking them why they do so they are unsure they either do it for the sake of doing it or because the coach just simply told them to. So I do think there is probably a better way of approaching your squats and deadlifts but to start this video off I am going to talk about some of the positives that can come from doing high rep sets. Now the first one being the metabolite accumulation that you can achieve doing a high rep set. As the duration of the set increases, so does metabolite build up within the muscle cells and this can lead to an increase in cell swelling, an increase in, in intracellular hydration and can lead to other pathways that can possibly be beneficial for hypertrophy. Another reason why you may be wanting to do high rep sets is for the slow twitch fiber recruitment and possible growth that you can achieve doing a high rep set. This can also be beneficial when the goal is hypertrophy. Now, high rep sets have also been shown to work, to anecdotally shown to work with many pro bodybuilders who have done high rep squats and deadlifts in the past and have gotten some pretty good results. But just because they have used this method does not mean it is the best method for everyone to be using, nor does it mean it is the optimal method. Another reason why you may want to do high rep squats and deadlifts is if you get joint pain or you just can't handle heavy loads, being able to use a lighter weight and still get a stimulative effect can come in very handy. Now when I say stimulative, I'm referring to the hypertrophic effectiveness of either the rep or the sets. Okay, If a set isn't stimulative, then it has very little benefit when it comes to hypertrophy. So to move on, first we need to understand that hypertrophy can be achieved in all rep ranges as long as there is a sufficient intensity of effort. So as intensity of effort rises throughout a set, so does muscle fiber recruitment and particularly fast twitch fiber recruitment. So if we aren't training with a sufficient intensity of effort within our sets, then we aren't going to be maximally recruiting our fast twitch fibers. Now, the reason fast twitch fibers are important is because they have a greater potential for growth when compared to slow twitch fibers. And part of the reason is because they contain a greater concentration of the enzyme that signals the nuclei within the muscle cells to synthesize proteins. So now if we look at the graphic here, we see a 5 rep max set, reps going up. This here is the stimulative threshold where any reps below this threshold fail to provide a benefit when it comes to hypertrophy. And here we see fatigue. So these are all arbitrary terms that I've used to help demonstrate what I am talking about. So with a five rep max set, every rep within the set is highly stimulative. And this is because the intensity of effort is really high for each rep and the contraction velocity of the reps is slow. And this is because the weight you are using is fairly heavy and contraction velocity is another factor that needs to be taken into account when uh, talking about muscle fiber recruitment. So for these reasons, every rep within that set is highly stimulative. And in the case of squats and deadlifts, doing a five rep max set may generate 15 units of fatigue. Okay, if we're talking about something like a leg extension, it may be something like five units of fatigue. As I said though, these are just arbitrary terms. Now if we look at a 10 rep max set, you see that before reps become stimulative, there are another five additional reps that we have to perform. 
and this causes more fatigue. So we get 25 units of fatigue and you do have to take into account that the reps that aren't stimulative don't generate as much fatigue as these reps here. Now, you might say, well, why don't we just perform five rep maxes throughout our workouts so we don't get any additional fatigue? Well, the problem with doing five rep maxes when the goal is hypertrophy is that it's very hard to accumulate a sufficient amount of volume uh, when doing five rep max sets. Okay, so when the goal is hypertrophy, it's very important that you are accumulating a sufficient amount of volume within your session and over time. Now, as I said, five rep sets just make it very hard to do so. Now, these reps here shouldn't be seen as useless reps because they actually set up the fatigue for subsequent reps to be stimulative, okay? And the eight to 15 rep range seems to be the, a pretty good rep range for us to achieve sufficient amount of volume in without any excessive fatigue. So now, if we look at a 20 rep max set, before reps become stimulative, we need to perform about 15 reps, okay? And the reason these reps aren't stimulative is because the intensity of effort is very low because you are using a fairly light weight at this point, and the contraction velocity is also fairly fast, again, because the weight isn't very heavy, okay? So with this 20 rep max set, we generate 45 units of fatigue, okay? And this is massive compared to the, six, the five rep max set and the 10 rep max set, okay? So again, we need to understand that squats and deadlifts are highly demanding movements and they cause a lot more fatigue when compared to other lifts. This is why I recommend being wise about your exercise selection when it comes to your high rep sets using something like a leg extension or a split squat or a hamstring curl is probably a better option for your high rep sets when compared to squats and deadlifts, okay? So, generating all this fatigue is also going to get in, the way, in your way when it comes to volume accumulation within the set, okay? Imagine starting off your workout doing three sets of 20 on squats. That is going to generate, as I said, a heap of fatigue and your subsequent exercises are going to suffer because of that. Meaning you may have to drop weight, you might have to drop reps, or you might have to drop sets, okay? Overall, a decrease in volume is probably going to occur after performing three sets of 20 on a squat or a deadlift, okay? So when the goal is hypertrophy, squats and deadlifts aren't the be all and end all. You should be using these movements to focus on getting stronger, and using them to kickstart the cascade of anabolic signals that we need to occur uh, in our body to see growth and then capitalizing on that with other movements, other isolation movements like leg extensions, walking lunges and hamstring curls and, and things like that. Another factor that we need to consider is that when fatigue rises throughout a set, so does the chance of technique breaking down, okay? And in the context of squats and deadlifts, these movements are not only highly demanding movements, but they also come with a high skill component, meaning that the chances of technique breakdown occurring with these movements is high. Okay? And when technique breakdown occurs, then injury risk goes up, and this is definitely going to be detrimental to your goals. Now, the last factor I want you guys to consider is that exercise selection itself should be a primary driver of the rep ranges and loading zones you choose. So squats and deadlifts, they just don't lend themselves well to high reps and low weights. But on the other hand, if we look at a leg extension, this movement lends itself well to high reps and lower weights, okay? So these are the types of movements that you should be using to achieve metabolic stress and slow twitch fiber recruitment and all the other benefits that come from high rep sets. So overall, I do recommend keeping your squats and deadlifts in between four to 10 reps and focusing on getting stronger within that rep range, adding sets or adding reps, just progressing volume as a whole within that range and using other movements that I mentioned before, movements that,
movements that aren't as fatiguing and don't have a high skill component. That's it for today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions about this topic.